This is a special report from About Space Today. Welcome to our special report. The NASA launch team is ready for a second attempt to launch the world's most powerful rocket tomorrow afternoon. About Space Today's live coverage can be seen on our YouTube channel, tinyurl.com backslash aboutspacetodayyt. Once again, it's tinyurl.com backslash aboutspacetodayyt. And like any test flight, there were issues with the launch on Monday, as Space Coast News Editor Don Meyer explains. Now the weather had caused an hour delay in processing due to lightning, and then the cryogenic fuel loading problem started as the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen were being loaded into the core stage of the rocket. Problems continued and were wonderfully remedied for several hours until the cooling of the main engines failed. None of the troubleshooting steps worked on that and ultimately, about 10 minutes before the opening of the launch window, the mission was scrubbed for this attempt. NASA will begin to cool down all four engines earlier and said the problem could be a faulty sensor. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson made it clear that we will not launch until it's ready. We don't launch until it's right. And in fact, uh, they've got a problem with the uh, gases going on the engine bleed on one engine. Uh, you can't go. You, there are certain guidelines. Uh, and I think uh, it's just illustrative that this is a very complicated machine, a very complicated system, and all those things have to work. And you don't want to light the candle until it's ready to go. Um, I have some personal experience uh, in the crew that I participated in uh, on the 24th flight of the space shuttle. We scrubbed four times mm. on the pad. Okay. Uh, and the fifth try was a flawless mission. Uh, we know had we launched on any one of those scrubs, it wouldn't have been a good day. Mm. And so uh, that was Hoot Gibson and Charlie Bolden's crew. And so, uh, you know, this is just part of the space business. And it's part of particularly a test flight. We are stressing and testing this rocket and the spacecraft uh, in a way that you would never do it with uh, the human crew on board. That's the purpose of a test flight. Nelson added that he was optimistic that the problem would be solved. I want them to know that they're do doing the perfect job that they always do. Uh, they're taking an uh, opportunity while that vehicle is still uh, fueled up uh, to work this problem. Uh, and they're going to work it. They'll get to the bottom of it. They'll get it fixed. And then we'll fly. Weather continues to be questionable. Mark Berger, the launch weather officer from the 45th Weather Squadron, predicts a high probability of showers, but is optimistic there will be an opening in the two-hour launch window, and it opens at 2.17 p.m. Eastern Time. Crowds will again pack the 528 Causeway and the cruise port area. Estimates were that between 100 to 200,000 people were here on Monday, and now the estimate is up to 400,000 expected to gather to watch tomorrow's historic launch and our return to the moon to stay. The excitement is back and NASA prepares to land the first woman and the next person of color on the moon no earlier than late 2025. Join our coverage tomorrow at 1.50 p.m. on our YouTube channel, tinyurl.com backslash aboutspacetodayyt. I'm David Denault, and this has been a special report on the launch of the SLS. This has been a special report from About Space Today.